is Lisa Ann Auerbach. I did a project for the Freeze Art Fair called Psychic Art Advisor. Yeah, I'm Hannah Greeley and I made the piece behind me. High and Dry is the name of the piece. My name is Patrick Jackson. The project's called Alley on the Inside. Hi, I'm Corey Newkirk. The title of my work is called Signal. Well, I was asked to submit a proposal for a project at the back lot. And uh, when the curator of the project, Ali Sabotnik, brought all the artists onto the lot to look around and check out spaces they, they might want to use. And just trying to figure out what I could do that was sort of similar to my normal practice, but really taking into consideration this extraordinary fake of this back lot. It's as if we're kind of in old, old-timey New York, you know? There's a little bit of nostalgia to this set, I found, and so then I decided to use the old style of hanging up laundry that you would see maybe turn of the century. I thought it would be a perfect venue for a psychic of some sort because oftentimes these kinds of buildings that you see behind me have a sign in one of the windows in an apartment that is advertising a psychic. So it seemed sort of like a no-brainer, like of course this spot needs some sort of psychic. And then I wanted to make it more specific for the fair, and so mashing up those two industries made a lot of sense. I was interested in this space because when you walk inside, it still feels like you're outside. So the idea came up to make an alley on the inside. The alley that I built inside is the very literal part of it, where it's an alley indoors. But I was also thinking of alley on the inside as a psychological term, um, kind of thinking of the dark corners of the mind or the subconscious. So it's also, it's, uh, the title has a double meaning, both the space and then also as a reference to how the reliefs were made of kind of trying to pull things out of the subconscious. It's kind of based a little on analog communication, um, things that we don't use anymore, like really shopping, the notion of a shopping cart is very digital these days. Television reception is very digital these days. Also, I think an upside down shopping cart really speaks to the sort of urbanness of this site. I live downtown in Los Angeles and have only ever lived downtown, and so I felt with this piece, I could bring a little bit of the reality that I see and understand every day to this site. And I found this site so rich with history and context. It was like a, an art piece in and of itself, so I found it actually a little intimidating at first. But then, I don't know, I began to think about it like the white space is sort of our template to work off of, and this is also used just as a kind of template to work off as well in filmmaking and things like that. So what helped me was to think of it almost as like a cartoon world that I could just sort of draw my cartoons over and just let my imagination play. And that sort of freed me up. It's a mashup between the idea of an art advisor and a psychic advisor. And so the components of the project are the space where the psychic advisor, psychic art advisor is stationed and the meetings that the advisor has with clients who book them in advance and come in with questions concerning collecting, creativity, connoisseurship, and curating. And I'm hanging uh, what looks like like clothes, but it's actually paintings that I did individually, handmade paintings. Uh, but then I included other things that uh, would go into the sky, such as clouds or lightning bolts or helicopters and things like that to kind of create a sort of fictitious, I guess you could call it a tableau of sorts. There's the logic of the clothes that actually go on the clothes line. But then as you look up, you see through the, the depth of field, you see these clouds behind you. You might see airplanes flying by. You might see like, I've seen a few. I've seen hawks flying by. I've seen seagulls flying by. So it's almost like I'm looking through, capturing those moments and pinning them up next to the clothes. The way that they're made is I have a tray about the size of my uh, arm reach that's filled with clay and I basically come to the tray and then just make what's on my mind. These are a white cement, so the clay that I make is a cast, a mold is made, and then uh, the final cast is in cement. As far as choosing cement, I tried to do something that sort of felt like it existed in 
sculpture history. So I was looking at a lot of uh, Greco-Roman kind of uh, artworks and think of marble and reliefs. And um, so the cement seemed like a good fit. The antennas are new. The television antennas are very new. I chose to really use new ones. I was not interested in the history of the old ones being brought into this. Right, the, the patina that those already hold, when I look at them up on the roof, I realize that that would give the whole piece another kind of patina that I was not interested in, so I found perfectly new ones. The starfish was a late addition because I didn't think the piece was weird enough without it. I'm not quite sure what that fully means yet, or I'm probably not going to tell you what that fully means yet, uh, but I just felt it needed a little bit of that weirdness along with that rope thing, which is really also a little bit about access. Because of my interest in small businesses and small freestanding businesses with sole proprietorships, I have a space in my backyard that we use for artists who want to start small businesses that are not related directly to their own art practice. And one of those projects was a psychic. And I really like the idea of a psychic advisor as someone who might be not a person um, of means or power who has a lot of power in a situation with a client. So oftentimes psychics and art advisors are women and I'm interested in that kind of dynamic of being listened to and having that seat of power. Oh, well, I wanted to talk about sort of the randomness of my experience of the world, you know? Especially in LA, there's a lot of kind of random things that seem to happen that create like almost a surreal quality to the city. But it all just seems to go together and you don't really question it. Um, and it's part of what it's like to live here, I think. Yeah, they're starting to break down like the longer that they're out here and they start to feel more natural, like they belong. Like as if they're part of the scene instead of just cutouts placed there. So I've enjoyed seeing that happen, yeah. A lot of the site is doing the work for you. Um, with sculpture, I try to do that whenever possible because constructing things totally from scratch, like a space, is very expensive and kind of wasteful a lot of the time. So I've done shows in my apartment, um, other unusual spaces, and I pick them because like 80% of the work is already done, it already exists, and then you can focus on the real details of, like, of the sculptures that you place in there. What I find really great about the back lot in comparison and in conjunction with the other work is the work out here tends to be really handmade. There's a real feel of the artist, the touch, the, if I think about a lot of the work, Patrick and Hannah, that there is a evidence of the making of the work as compared to perhaps some of the work that's going on in the fair, which is really um, commodified and commercialized in a certain way, because really, at the end of the day, this is an art fair and it is really all about business. But the work out here is really, um, yeah, it's been touched. It really feel, I really feel the presence of the artist in a way that I don't fully feel 100% inside the tent. And I think that that is kind of amazing, right? That contrast, I think, is really important. And I'm not sure if all these people who are surrounding me sort of can understand that or read that or if that's even important to them, but it's really kind of interesting and important to me.